Good morning, everyone, to this, this, the 6th of December, 2020. As we continue on our Advent journey, knowing that the theme of this journey for us this year is the theme of company is coming. Christ is coming. And so let's hear the words from Isaiah spoken in chapter 40. Verse 1 to 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows over them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, Go up on a high mountain, you who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice and shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judea, Judea, here is your God, here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power and rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his reward accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, where there seems to be no way, no way to end the conflicts and the violence in our time. We pray that you would teach us, O oh Christ, to prepare the way. Where we can see no way to provide for the needs of all people, we pray that you would show us, O oh God. Show us how to prepare the way for you, for others where we can find no way, no way to work together for justice. We pray that you would change us, O oh Christ, until we, we are the ones that do the work to prepare the way. Where we are unable to believe in a way to live simply, responsibly and mindfully, we pray that you would inspire us to faith, to a faith that prepares the way on your behalf, Lord. In a world where we are tempted to see so many of our challenges as dead ends, we pray for a new vision, a new heart, and a new commitment. A new commitment to prepare the way for your reign, your grace, your shalom for the liberation, justice and peace that you long to bring to each and every one of us, but also to all of creation. Lord, hear our prayer as we meditate on the words of this wonderful song. Yeah. 
has come To bring light into the darkness He has come To bring freedom to the captives He has come To restore the broken heart in time to proclaim
So as we continue with today's message, our reading comes to us from Mark chapter 1, verse 1 to 8, a, a follow-on to the Isaiah 40 reading. We read in Mark 1, verse 1 to 8, the beginning of the good news is about the Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism, a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of our Lord. Praise be to God. The title of today's sermon is called The Cleanup Crew. Last week the title was This Place is a Mess. And so today it is The Cleanup Crew. And so last week we discussed the matter that this place is a mess. Our lives are a mess. The world around us is a mess. But company is coming. And so before you can even start with the cleaning up process, you need to recognize the mess around you. Recognizing your unique mess, which we too often just accept. And the mess of society, which we often want to ignore. And so having surveyed the mess around us, the next step is asking, who is going to do something about it? Who is going to step up and clear away the mess? Who is going to be part of the cleanup crew? Who is ready to prepare this place? Who is ready to get to work? Now having a four-year-old and an eight-year-old, I very much know that feeling of walking into the lounge and seeing all of the couch cushions on the floor because they were part of a pillow fort. Or seeing all of the toys spread all over the place because they were having such a great game. And then when I see this, I, this mess, I then ask, who, who is going to clean up this mess? And I ask this question and I listen for the answer and you know what I hear? Nothing. Just crickets. They seem to have an amazing gift to not hear certain questions. And the feeling I have is a feeling of being actively ignored. You feel like that sometimes? I'm sure you feel like that sometimes, don't you? You feel like no one is listening, no one is responding. You ask, who is going to clean up this mess? The mess of your life, the mess of the world. And yet we are not even sure anyone has even heard the question. In a very true sense, this is exactly what John the Baptist went through. He makes the proclamation, the voice of one crying out the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Essentially saying, God is company, coming, company is coming, clean up this mess, clean up this mess. 
And John appears every Advent to remind us that it is us who are going, who are doing the act of ignoring. It is us who have been part of making the mess and now ignoring the universal question of who is going to clean up the mess. You see, we, we think it's not our mess. <laughs> we think it's somebody else's mess. But John comes to say, no, no, it's your mess. It's your mess. And in fact, you are the one who is ignoring that universal question of who is going to clean up this mess. And so, like I do to catch the attention of my kids, he shouts to wake us up. He dresses oddly to catch our fascination. He storms up and down the riverbank, asking us to take the plunge and get cleaning. See, the irony of life is that often we look at the mess and that we are a part of having created, and then we think, Who's going to clean up this mess? We want to, like children, not just avoid taking responsibility for having created the mess, but we also want to shift the responsibility for who must be part of the cleanup crew of said mess. You see, John is asking for something from us. He is asking us to join the cleanup crew. We have got streets to clean, lives to straighten up, problems to sort out. Whether we think in personal terms about cleaning up our own hearts and bodies, straightening out our behavioral patterns, or in communal terms of justice and anti-racism, anti-gender-based violence, as we make straight the paths of hope, wholeness that have bent in messy ways that keep certain people out, that hurt certain people out. Either way, there is a clean, there is clean up work to be done. A response needs to be made. John wants us to participate in our own salvation. The one who comes does not overwhelm us, does not transform us against our will. No, we are partners, contributors in the cleaning up activity of hope and transformation. Now, do we have to do this cleanup all by ourselves? No, not according to Isaiah. Just like when I summoned my kids to clean up the lounge, I am pretty much always part of that cleaning up activity. I get involved with them. I refuse to do it without them, but I'm happy to assist them as they try their best to get things back to how they should be. Jesus is God's response to sharing in the cleanup activity of our lives and the world. He calls us to see the mess we have made, to come and recognize that we need to take responsibility for cleaning up the mess. And then he joins us in doing so. Listen to this again from Isaiah. He said, here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power. He rules with a mighty hand. See his reward is with him and his reward accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and he carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Here is our God. He is here with us in the mess. He rewards us. His reward to us who are waiting for him 
who are wanting to get things clean again, is that He comes with a mighty arm and gently guides us in the way of getting things cleaned up. He invites us to be part of the cleanup crew and then He personally guides, leads and participates within the work of this cleanup crew. And God will get things cleaned up, not necessarily the way we want to get it done, but in the manner in which God envisions. You know, I know left to their own devices, my two boys could just create a new kind of mess. And that's why I joined them. And, and the truth is, so would we if we don't go about cleaning things up the way God intended through the life of Jesus, through relationships that fulfill us and connect us, this is the divine cleanup we all seek. A clean life is when we are loved and healed and heard. And it is this way of sorting out the mess of life that we find in Jesus. The child in the manger who came to be with you because love caused him to desire a deep, meaningful relationship with you. The Savior on the cross who was willing to die for you because love caused him to yearn for you to have a deep, meaningful relationship with the Father. Company is coming. And so we need to make ready. We need to make ourselves ready, make our world ready for the one who comes to lead us out of the mess and into the clean way of living, the divine way of living, a loving way of living. And the wonderful joy is that we get to be a part of the cleanup crew with Jesus, the one who loves us. Cleaning up the mess of our lives, the mess of the world, this isn't a menial task. This is an act that reveals the glory of God's love. This is a sign that we are those, that we are those who know that company is coming in love and that we are those who desire to be, desire to be ready for the one who is coming. We want to be ready, prepared for the one who is coming. And so, my friends, my prayer for you is that you may get to work cleaning up for loving company is coming. Get to work cleaning up because loving company is coming. Let's just close our eyes for a moment as we pray before we prepare for Holy Communion. Heavenly Father, God of hope, you raised up John the Baptizer as a herald who caused us to prepare our lives to get ready for your arrival, to get ready to start working and cleaning up the mess of our lives and the world with you. And Lord, as we joyfully await the glorious coming of Christ, we pray to you for the needs of the church, our community, our families and the world. Hear our humble prayers that we may serve you in holiness and faith, 
and give voice to your presence among us until the day of the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And so we come to the Holy Table. We celebrate you, Lord, and praise you, God of new beginnings and surprising opportunities, because you never cease to make yourself available to us. We appreciate you and thank you, God, of unquestionable life and irresistible grace, because you continue to offer us the source of your spirit. We love you and embrace you, God of unfailing compassion and constant companionship, because you walk beside us and transform us into, ag into agents of love, because you help to clean up the mess. Lord, forgive us when we avoid our mess or accept our mess and don't come to you asking you to help fix up the mess. Forgive us, Lord. But Lord, we know that you invite us to this holy meal as a gift, as a gift of healing, a gift of clearing, a gift of restoring, a gift of making things right. And so, Lord, we know that on the night on which your son was to be betrayed, he was with his disciples and he took bread and he gave thanks and he blessed it. And then he broke it, giving it to his disciples, saying, This is my body broken for you, because I love you so, so, so much that I want to be a part of your life now and forever. And so when you eat it, do it in remembrance of me. I invite you to pick up the bread that is before you and I invite you to pick it up, bless it, and then break it again and then to share it share it amongst yourselves and do this in remembrance of God thank you Lord giving your love to us. And then in the same way after supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks. He blessed it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my blood poured out for you and for many in a new covenant for the forgiveness of your sins, of everyone's sins. When you drink this, know that my blood washes away the mess of your life, washes away the mess of the world, making things clear and clean. Whenever you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. I invite you to pick up the juice or the cup in your home and to now share it amongst yourselves, but doing this in remembrance of what Jesus has done for you on the cross. So Heavenly Father, we have received you this, the body and the blood of your Son. We thank you, Lord God, for breaking into our world, our lives and our experiences. We thank you, O Christ, for this meal of remembering and the stories of love and grace that it tells us. 
We thank you, O Spirit, for your presence and your challenge for us to become agents of God's compassion in Jesus' name. In this moment of worship, we embrace your presence again, O Lord. We offer you our love. In this moment of prayer, we proclaim again your purpose for the world. And so we offer you our resources. And in this moment of giving, we hear your call again, Lord. We offer you ourselves. Let us pray. Almighty God, as John the, Baptist, uh, John the Baptist identified the arrival of the Messiah this Advent season, that role now falls on us as we begin, as we bring our souls to you, our offerings to you, our love to you. We pray that as you work in our lives through this holy meal, that as we become clean by the body and blood, by the grace and love of your Son Jesus Christ, that we then may be able to play a role in cleaning the world around us, of cleaning up the mess that can be found in the world around us. Thank you, Lord, that indeed you are coming. Thank you, Lord, that you are there to work in the mess of our lives and our situations and that you will never leave us alone. We pray this in your wonderful, powerful name. Amen. Amen. And so let's raise our hands together as those who now will say these words as a blessing, as a, as a way of preparing the way for the one who's coming. And so now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in love. Go in peace. Know that company is coming, and he is coming, he's coming for you. <laughs>